Matt Davio back at the One Minute Trader Podcast. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, reasons why traders get into slumps and we all do get into slumps and really two of the main reasons that I've found that uh, uh, people slump is are, are pretty straightforward. The first is either uh, or rather number one changes in their life situation and or mindset can lead to uh, getting away from your strengths as a trader and sound trading practices. So what do I mean by this? Basically, uh, there's a death, there's a divorce, you're getting married, uh, somebody's very sick. All these things, if not addressed, can be a, a drag or an effect on traders uh, and how they perform in the market. The second uh, major uh, reason really why traders enter slumps, and I think this one is really more prevalent. I mean, we obviously, and, and, and I wouldn't say in the number one that it's obvious sometimes. Uh, you may have, uh, you know, have a long-standing uh, fight going on with your significant other that uh, you don't really think may be affecting you, but it may. But the one that is more prevalent uh, is really in why traders get into slumps. And then the second one is really changes in the markets. And what, do, what I mean by that is it really should be every vehicle that you trade, you need to uh, look at both trend, time frame, and volatility. In the first scenario that we talked about changes in your life situation, trader uh, responds to how they lose money may have something to do with uh, the, the things that are going on in their life. The second time, in the second situation, if there is a change in volatility in the way the markets are moving and you don't recognize this, uh, the things that used to work in a trending market up or a trending market down now don't work. And sometimes uh, younger traders who hadn't been through the multitudes of cycles don't see this. So I get asked often by uh, clients that I work with, uh, you know, a question as far as why, why is this month's behavior with the stock index or oil different than the chart may suggest? And, uh, you know, we may be shaping up for an inside month uh, and, and a narrower range than we had in the last month. So these are the types of things that you really have to understand both trend, volatility, changes in volatility, where we are. And I always tell people I don't day trade in general, and especially in a market like we're in today where volatility is so low, day trading really goes off the table for me in most respects because unless there is something uh, that is going to change the volatility and the structure of this market, uh, it's gonna be very difficult to day trade something that is maybe only a quarter of a percent wide. Uh, for example, the S&P uh, very often of late is five to 10 points wide intraday, which means there are only, you know, from the top to the bottom in a market in the S&P, you only have a very limited chance to catch a move. And most people can't catch the ultimate top and the bottom. So why bother trying to, to day trade something uh, when the market doesn't give you those opportunities. So uh, you need to, to really conform yourself to the type of market in that sec second situation. Uh, the, you know, the other thing that, that, that I look for on the psychological side is the tone of the person, you know, what's happened in their life. So going back to that number one instance, are these things that, uh, are take, that you're taking on in your life, maybe you have some health concerns, Maybe your, your child is going through some difficulty emotionally and you're having to deal with that both in, inside of work and outside of work. Often people will get called away from their desk. So you really need to look at, can you be undistracted and focus on the task at hand as a trader at all times? If not, it may be a time to take a break. So one of the things that I, I always like to talk about is these two areas are key areas where slumps come into play. And on the psychological side, you really need to figure out where that frustration is coming from. Is it coming from internal and external uh, items that are changes in your life? Or is it something that's going on again with the market itself? Have we changed uh, the way that the market is moving? So those are the two key areas where I think you need to look at when you get into a slump. And it's usually one or the other that is, uh, and it could be both, uh, that are affecting you. In other words, you could have both personal situations changes going on emotionally and have a market that is uh, either expanding in volatility or contracting. Uh, and, and these are the types of things that you really need to look for. 
When this happens, I suggest changing size, going down to a smaller level uh, until you get adjusted to uh, what is going on in the marketplace and what is going on emotionally and outside of uh, the, the market. So I'd look for changes in the sizing, how often the frequency of your trading, as well as your execution. Uh, if there's frustration in your trading, that might be affecting your decision making overall. So if you're frustrated outside of, uh, again, work, uh, that can be brought into work and you need to be uh, responsive and understand that that is a situation that comes in. When I'm frustrating, I like to take away take time away from the markets. And I even try to do that on a micro level uh, down to the day level. Uh, I know that in my, tr my trading, I don't trade very often, and, uh, especially when there's no volatility during the lunch hour. So I get away for a couple hours, I go meet with people, uh, I go uh, get some of the medical dentistry appointments that I have to get done, get these things out of the way during the slow times. That way I can come back refreshed with clear eyes and with clear vision to see the market. And this is really important. Uh, it's really very important. So uh, make sure that you get away and understand that this is normal uh, and having kind of these cycles that go through, uh, you know, even for seasoned professionals in the business. The key is diagnosing the slump early, reducing the risk exposure before the losses become too serious and instituting these corrective types of measures. So. Once you go through these, uh, again, these cycles, you'll, you'll know how to recognize them, uh, hopefully uh, more prevalent and more uh, and, and react and prevent them from, uh, from having a negative result. So understand that the shifts in, in volatility and trends are a factor and the personal life uh, decisions are a factor. And when these frustrations start creeping in, drill down, look at your trades, look at the detail. And this is again, why you need to keep a journal what happened before, what happened after, the patterns will show up and you'll start to see that if you drill down into this uh, and you'll get away from this frustrated mindset and understand that this is just the way the market is or this is just the way that things are right now. And if you can have that kind of stoic approach about how to deal with these situations, you're gonna be a much more successful performer in the long run. So hope this was helpful today here at the one minute Trader Podcast, uh, talking a little again about slumps. If you have any questions, drop me a line, matt at one minute trader.tv. I look forward to hearing from you soon. And as always, we appreciate you taking a listen. Please like us, tell your friends about this, and we hope these little nuggets are helping you as you go on in your trading careers.